An emergency is in place. There is tight curfew in Sri Lanka's second largest city and holy temple town, Kandy. But it's been six years since the end of Sri Lanka's 30-year-long civil war. Six peaceful, progressive years. So what is it that has shattered that peace? The on senior foreign editor Padma Rao reports. There's an uneasy pall of calm over the east coast and the central mountains of Sri Lanka. The eastern province of Amparai and the holy city of Kandy and its suburbs were rocked by weeks of rioting. Singhalese majority mobs have reportedly attacked Muslims and shops owned by members of Sri Lanka's second largest minority. One person was killed and two hospitalized. 81 people, including the main suspect, one Amit Jeevan Virasinghe, have been arrested. Still, most of the international media, especially Middle Eastern concerns, are painting exaggerated pictures of bloodthirsty Sinhalese and victimized Muslims. But we at Weon have been talking to Sri Lankan analysts of all religions and what we are discovering paints a slightly different picture. It is true that Sinhalese intolerance is on the rise and this time it's not Sri Lanka's Tamils who are the targets but the country's nearly 2 million Muslims. There can be no justification for violence, of course. But one must examine the root cause of the distrust of Muslims in Sri Lanka that has been growing since 2009. And that root cause lies in the alarming spread of Wahhabism among one of the most tolerant and peaceful Muslim communities in the world, that of Sri Lanka. It's no secret anymore that Sri Lanka's close neighbour, the Maldives, is already in the throes of Saudi Arabia's wealth and radical indoctrination, reportedly with the blessings of the Maldives' as dictatorial president. Saudi Arabia has reportedly trained and been dispatching English-speaking Wahhabi speakers around the world. And which region could be more attractive than South Asia, where there are already huge Muslim communities? Some of the controversial speakers trained and dispatched by Saudi Arabia reportedly include Ismail Menk, Zakir Naik and Tariq Jamil. Menk has been banned from the United Kingdom and Singapore, while Zakir Naik is on India's most wanted list. Reports in the Sri Lankan media also point to local preachers like Rizvi Mufti and Muiz Bukhari. And now take a look at these statistics. There are a total of 749 madarsas in Sri Lanka and one Islamic university. There are at least 10 major mosques in the island nation and dozens of smaller ones. 90% of Sri Lanka's mosques though are in the clutches of Wahhabi preachers and 33 Sri Lankan Muslims were reported to have joined the Islamic State. Analysts say that Sinhalese intolerance is on the rise primarily because of the changes noticed in traditionally tolerant Muslim neighbours, the growing shrillness of their religious teachers and the adoption of the alien hijab. But opposition leader Mahinda Rajapaksa yesterday added another startling element to the possible cause of the riots. In an article he contributed to a Lankan daily, he points to foreign elements hell-bent on tearing Sri Lanka asunder. A phenomenon that no country knows better than the one located at crucial oil tanker shipping lanes right in the middle of the Indian Ocean, the small nation of Sri Lanka. Padma Rao, Vion. And Padma Rao joins me live from the Vion newsroom now. Good evening, Padma. After years of uh, Tamil extremism, are we now looking at the rise of Islamic radicalism in Sri Lanka? Well, I wouldn't go as far as to, uh, you know, put it on the same scale as uh, the LTTE-led uh, uh, form of terrorism among the Tamils. Uh, you know, to even call it Tamil terrorism would be a misnomer because it was really terrorism at the hands of, uh, in, uh, you know, of a, of a group of people uh, who were supported, financed, aided and abetted by uh, certain sections of the Tamil diaspora. So let's not, you know, compare, make that comparison. But certainly, yes, there is a rise and this is what analysts in Sri Lanka have been telling us uh, there has been a rise in fact since 2009 since the war ended uh, and uh, you know of and the borders I mean most people are concerned about the porous borders and that immigration control is not doing enough to prevent such known radicals from entering the country and slowly indoctrinating and poisoning the minds of what is essentially one of the really one of the most peaceful and tolerant uh, communities Muslim communities in the world uh, Sri Lanka's third largest minor second largest minority
And uh, as you know, um, uh, Ramesh, the Maldives is not very far away. We've seen that kind of, uh, you know, penetration and infiltration in, on, in both uh, 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 directions uh, before. And uh, that seems to be happening not only from the Maldives, but also from uh, preachers who are landing, you know, at Colombo Airport and who have been meeting and indoctrinating people. Now, at the, you know, at the very simple village level, uh, people are obviously seeing, you know, two pictures and putting together a story. They're seeing the Islamic State. They've also heard reports of the 33 elite uh, Sri Lankan Muslims who joined the Islamic State. Uh, and these are simple people in small villages who are, uh, you know, afraid when they see visible signs uh, like shriller uh, preachers in mosques or, uh, you know, more and more women covering themselves uh, in hijab, which is not uh, typical to this area, uh, region of the world, uh, as you know. And these are alien influences. And, uh, you know, whenever there is an alien influence, people tend to get paranoid. However, having said that, I'd like to to emphasize again that in absolutely no way does beyond support any violence by any community against any community be they minority or majority uh, but unfortunately we have to look at the root cause uh, also and not just uh, you know uh, tarnish all Sinhalese or all Muslims with the same brush as certain sections of the international media have been doing over the last one week